Hey, welcome everybody to CF Online. If this is your first time with us, we want to thank you for joining us. Also, whether you've been joining us for the first time or you haven't been here in a while, we want to connect with you. And the best way we know how to do that is by filling out a connection card. You can simply get that by going to cfmiami.org slash connect and we'll plug you in right here at Christ Fellowship. Also, when you do that, we have a special digital gift for our first time guests. So make sure you fill out that connection card. And guys, get ready. Next Sunday, January 16th at 1045 a.m., we are hosting our CF 101 class. CF 101 is designed to help you see who God is, who we are, and how you can discover your place here at Christ Fellowship. We host this class on site and online once a month. To sign up, go to cfmiami.org slash connect and check off CF 101 on that connection card. Now join us as we worship together. Hey, Christ Fellowship, we're so excited you could be here to worship with us. Let's go ahead and give praise to the God, the name above all names, the Lion and the Lamb, and He fights our battles, amen? So let's put our hands together.
What does man gain by all the toil which he toils under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. And the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south and goes around to the north. Around and around goes the wind, and on its circuits the wind returns. All streams run to the sea, but the sea isn't full. To the place where the streams flow, there they flow again. All things are full of weariness. A man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Big shot. Is there a thing of which it is said, see, this is new? It has been already in the ages before us. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of later things, yet to be among those who come after. Behold, all is vanity and a striving after wind. family. Join us next week as we start a brand new series, Chasing Wind. We will be taking a deep dive into the book of Ecclesiastes. In this Bible book written by King Solomon, we will see that a life lived apart from God can be hard, short, and sometimes meaningless. In this series, we will discover the true satisfaction that comes when we allow God to infuse himself into our life. You can invite a friend or a family member to enjoy this message with you. And don't forget that this message will help you live your life in contentment instead of desperation while chasing the wind. As many of you know, Caring for Miami is our nonprofit organization whose mission is to help more people in our city by serving their physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. One of the ways they do this is by the backpack program. Their main goal is to feed hungry kids during the weekends when the schools are closed. You see, this past weekend, we asked you to make someday today. To help us provide food for as many kids as possible. Church family, let me tell you, you went above and beyond your regular giving. And thanks to you, we were able to collect enough funds to support this. Listen to this, 560 children and the total amount collected, 126,154. And you made some day today and 560 little bellies will go to bed happy in 2022 because of your generosity. And that's not all. Through Project Smile, another initiative of Caring for Miami that provides dental care to low income and uninsured people. Through your generosity, we were able to give, are you ready? Hold your horses. We were able to give $904,143. Yes, that's what I said, in free. Yes, free dental care last year. Almost a million dollars in free dental work to people who without Project Smile would not have access to the proper and very necessary care. CF family, I wanna take a moment to say thank you. Thank you for helping us make a difference in our city. We were able to share the gospel and the love of Jesus with those who have very little. And let me tell you something, none of this would be possible if it weren't for your generosity and your passion for making a difference in other people's lives. That's right. Also today, I wanna to encourage you to join us in making a positive impact in our city through your generosity. To join our church and helping others follow Jesus, you can go to cfmiami.org slash give. Thank you so much for your generosity. Would you pray with us? Holy Father, we wanna thank you, God, as we get to celebrate what you did last year, Lord. And, and not only that, Lord, but what you have for this year, God. We thank you for the heart and the mission you put in us, Lord, to go serve the community and be a light, a beacon of hope, Lord, uh, to glorify your son's name, Jesus, Lord. Bless this offering now, Lord, and we give it up to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Church family, we have a good and faithful God. His word in Romans 8 says that nothing can separate us from His love. Even in our weaknesses, when we go through difficulties, He's with us. And He never changes. He was the same good God in 2021 and He will continue to be this year. Come on, let's sing together of His goodness, goodness of our God. you 
Come on, let's continue to give a shout of praise. Come on. You know, 
It's an amazing thing when the people of God gather together, God's children gather together, and they utter the words to our God, all of my life you have been faithful. All of my life you have been so, so good to me, amen? What a faithful, good God we serve. Come on, let's give another shout of adoration to our God. Man, it is great to be here. Welcome, CF family. My name is Omar, and I have the honor and the privilege of serving as the lead pastor here at Christ Fellowship. And this weekend is a very special weekend for us. Because today, as we open up God's Word, we're going to be really looking at our, the current state of our church, almost like the State of the Union address of, to our church. But more importantly, where we are going as a church, where is God leading us? What the future lies ahead? And so if it's your first time tuning in right now, or maybe at one of our campuses, listen, it's a little different than our usual teaching, but I so, I'm so glad you decided to join us today because not only will you learn a little bit about who we are as a church, but more importantly, where God is leading us in the future. And so can we just welcome our first time guests today? Hey, thank you so much for being here. And so wherever you find yourself, open up your Bibles to Nehemiah chapter 1 and Proverbs chapter 29, and you can follow along with me as I read. Listen to what God's holy word says. This is Nehemiah speaking. It says, And I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped, who had survived the exile, and concerning Jerusalem, that great city. And they said to me, the remnant there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. And the walls of Jerusalem, listen, they are broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. And then listen to what it says in Proverbs chapter 29. It says this, where there is no vision. Everyone say no vision. No vision. Everyone say no vision. no vision. Yeah, where there is no vision, the people perish. In other words, where the people of God, where they have no vision of what lies ahead, of what the horizon has in store for them. Listen, at that moment, the people of God begin to suffer. Amen? That is God's word. You can go ahead and take a seat, everybody, at all campuses. And let me start off by sharing this with you. You know, the day was January 26, 2020. And we had just finished launching our Doral campus, and it was a great, great grand opening. So many thousands of people came. It was a beautiful day, and I wish I would have been there, but I couldn't. I was actually here teaching God's Word. But the next weekend, I was not teaching, so I was able to go and visit, and it was such a blessing for me to see that they're all campus, such great people, uh, great volunteers. It was just really a blessing to my heart. But I remember that after the service was done, as I was walking towards the car, I took out my phone, and I opened up my news app on my phone. And the moment that I opened up that app, Let's watch the video that I saw that day. Good afternoon from New York. We're coming on the air with breaking news, very sad news to tell the sports world. The L.A. Times is reporting that retired Los Angeles Lakers basketball star Kobe Bryant has been killed in a helicopter crash. It happened this morning. The chopper reportedly went down just before 10 a.m. local time, according to fire, uh, the fire department out there in Calabasas, California. That's northwest of Los Angeles. You can see the picture there. It burst into flames on impact, starting a nearby brush fire. The 41-year-old Kobe Bryant was reportedly traveling with four others in that aircraft, in that helicopter. The L.A. County Fire Department saying all five people perished in the crash. At the time of the accident, there were foggy conditions in that area that may have diminished visibility. Bryant leaves behind a wife, Vanessa, and four daughters. He was, of course, one of the most legendary players in NBA history, starring for two decades with the L.A. Lakers, a four-time All-Star MVP player, winning five championships, making 18 All-Star games before he retired in 20... Wow. Now, the question that quickly arose in my mind, and really in the millions of minds that were watching that video, is how could this 
have happened. How could it be that such a sophisticated helicopter like this one crashed just like that? How could this have happened? And listen, the answer to that is what, is what pilots call spatial disorientation. Now follow me here because spatial disorientation is when the pilot of an aircraft is unable to determine the angle, the speed, or the altitude of the aircraft. And church, it usually happens when an aircraft enters into a prolonged state of fog. You see, because if they are in that fog for far, way too long, they begin to lose, get this, their sense of direction. And folks, it doesn't matter if they think that things are going just fine. Because in their mind, even, if, even though they think that the aircraft is going perfectly fine, that it's navigating just fine, the reality is that they really do not know where they're going. And folks, what happens at that juncture is that the aircraft begins to spiral down just like this, and many times it ends up catastrophically. It's what happened to the Kobe Bryant helicopter, and for those of you who are a little older, it's exactly what happened to, the, to John F. Kennedy Jr. And church, let me just bring all of that concept over to our teaching for today. Because church, what an image of what could happen to many churches in the midst of this pandemic. And by that I mean this, that just like a pilot, right, can lose their sense of direction. And when they are in a prolonged state of fog, listen, just like that. And here's the main idea as we open up God's word today. Listen, it is easy for a church after a prolonged period of this COVID fog, right, of a pandemic fog, to begin to lose its sense of direction. And, and, and folks, if that happens, listen, the church may think that everything is fine, that they are just coasting perfectly fine when reality, listen carefully, they might be heading to this for a disaster and they don't even know it. And so that raises a question that nearly every church needs to know the answer to. And that is this, how can we navigate during this pandemic so that we don't lose as a church our sense of direction and, and we don't lose the altitude that our God has brought us to? Well, then God provides a clear vision that can almost guide us like a guiding light in the middle of this pandemic. And those principles are found in the book of Nehemiah chapter 2, all right? So if you have your Bibles, turn to Nehemiah chapter 2, wherever you're watching. You can also open up your Christ Fellowship apps. And, uh, and, uh, and today, let me just give us two guiding lights of sorts that will enable CF to keep a clear vision as we go towards the future, right? So write this down as point number one. Hey, church, are you ready? Are you ready? All right. So write this down as point number one. Listen, the first thing is that we need a clear vision of our current reality. Now, church, before we dive into God's Word, let me just give us some context so that we understand what's going on because we find ourselves in a juncture in Scripture where the people of Israel were exiled from Jerusalem into the land of Babylon, into modern-day Iraq. And church, they were there for about 70 years. And towards the end of that time, there was a man named Nehemiah of Jewish descent who was the cupbearer of the king. And he wanted to know a little bit of what was going on back in his old city of Jerusalem. And so he asked for a report. He got that report, and things were not good. You know, the walls were broken down. The gates were destroyed by fire. And so he here, he, he goes to the king, and he asks for permission to go back to Jerusalem to survey the city. And by the grace of God, the king let him go. And so he takes a group of people, and they start heading towards the city of Jerusalem. And when he gets there, before he goes to the people, he wants to go around and survey the land. You know, he wants to have clarity as to what were the true conditions of the city of Jerusalem. So he goes around to all the gates, he goes to the walls, he inspects everything about that city. And when he assesses all the conditions of, of the walls, 
Then he gathers all the people of Israel, all the leaders, right? He gathers them together and he addresses them. And listen to what he tells them, because here's what I want to focus on for today, all right? Listen to what it says in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17. It says this, Then I said to them, You see the trouble that we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned. Now, church, stop right there for just a moment, because Nehemiah was brilliant. You know, he knew that the people of Jerusalem were almost like in a fog, in the sense that they were just living life, they were cultivating, living just their normal life. But the truth of the matter is that they were just going through life with no real direction, with no real vision. And so what he wanted to do first was awaken them to their present reality, to their current reality. You know, Napoleon Bonaparte, the great military leader, he once said this. He said, the role of a leader is to define reality and then give hope for the future. And church, listen, that's exactly what Nehemiah did here. Because if he wanted to see the Jewish people rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and move forward as the people of God, then then first they need to have a good sense of their current reality. So the first thing that he does, right, is he acknowledges, he makes them see what's truly going on all around them. And church, Christ follows so the same thing is with us. Because our church, listen, we have endured a long and tired season, haven't we? You know, the church has been impacted just like every, every other organization in this world. And so as before we look into the future, right, before we look to see where God is leading us, it's important for us to first have a clear vision of our current reality. Amen? And so I want to just spend some time with us and just kind of give us a little bit of a snap, some snapshots of where we're at as a church. I think it's healthy for us periodically to know where we're at. So the first thing is, write this down instead of A, if you're taking notes. We need to have a clear vision of our current attendance. Well, and so, so I'm going to give you some stats just so that you know where we're at. So before the pandemic, before COVID hit, I, I, for the year before that, we were averaging a little bit over 7,000 people attending our church and uh, uh, in, in, in one of our campuses every single week. And about 7,000, a little over 7,000 people. Pretty amazing. And then not only that, but online, we were averaging over 7,000 people tuning in and watching our services, which totals, as you can see, to about 14,859. And so it's amazing what the Lord was doing up to that point, right close to the pandemic. But once the pandemic hit, we went online for a short while. And when we reopened, I want to give you some, a snapshot of how we've been going through this pandemic uh, in regarding our attendance. So once after we reopened, that here's what I want to show you. We've been averaging about 3,100, a little bit over 3,100 in our physical location since we have opened up. Now, you may think, wow, that's a big drop from the 7,000 before the pandemic, and you are right, but here's what I want you to help you understand. Uh, we are pretty much exactly where other churches our size are. In fact, in, in, in national surveys, uh, most churches our size are pretty much re, you know, returned to physical locations between 45 and somewhere in the mid-50s, 55, 56%, somewhere in that range. And so I've talked to other pastors from all the way from West Palm Beach, uh, even to Miami, uh, even the, uh, another church in Miami that is comparable of size to us, and they are exactly at the same percentage of people before COVID. And so the reality is that uh, where we're at is pretty common right now uh, to our, for a church our size. Now, the smaller the church is, the, the higher the percentage, but for our church size, we're pretty much where everyone else is at. But the encouraging thing is that online, people are still watching. As you can see, we are averaging 14,000 people every single weekend watching our weekend services. Maybe you're watching right now, and you're one of those 14,000 people that's watching. But folks, here is the most encouraging thing. The total, as you can go back to the screen, the total 
uh, increase between before the pandemic and after the pandemic. There was about a 15% increase, if you can, there we go, a 15% increase before that in the sum between our attendance beforehand and afterwards. And so, hey, isn't it encouraging? Can we give it to the Lord that even though we are in the midst of a pandemic, listen, God's people are still tuning in. God's people are so hungry for God's truth. And God keeps drawing people, discouraged people from our city to come hear the message of the gospel. So what a blessing. Let's give it up to the Lord one more time. <laughs> Praise the Lord for even the, the technology that we have, that we can still connect and engage with God's word. But not only do I want to give you a clear vision of our current attendance, but also, write this down, letter B, a clear vision of the current life change that's taking place. So I want to give you some stats of some of the things that we've been able to do in the midst of this pandemic. First of all, we have been able, since we, the pandemic struck, we have been able to serve 14,859 people. Those are people that we have counted hospitals, uh, nurse, uh, you know, uh, police stations, all these different office buildings, places. Listen, we, those are the 14,000 people that have experienced the love of Christ in one way, shape, or form because of your faithful effort. And so thank you so much for being a church that is actively serving even in the middle of this pandemic. But, you know, God blesses our efforts because during this time, we have experienced online and on campus about 5,040 people that have come to visit us for the very first time. And folks, those are people that have actually filled out a connection card. So there's many people who may be tuning in that we have no clue that it's the first time, but they have. But listen, those are 5,000 people that we know for a fact wrote it down, hey, it's my first time. Here, a lot of mugs that have been giving out during this pandemic, right? 5,000 mugs. But folks, here's what's in encouraging. We have seen over, uh, over 300 people profess their faith in Christ, about 355 people. <laughs> and church, those are not people that have raised their hand and we count. No, 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 no. Those are people who actually went to the next booth or online and filled out a card and said, I, today I gave my life to Christ. I am confident there are many more people who have been impacted by the gospel. We just don't know. But, but I just want to show you the people who've let us know by hand. And here's another encouraging stat. We have baptized 319 people since the pandemic started. Yeah. And, you know, across the nation, baptisms are a record low. But for the, by the grace of God, we have been able to continue to baptize people so that they can publicly share this beautiful faith in the Lord. All right? So we have a clear vision of our current attendance, a clear vision of the life transformation that's taking place. But also write this down as letter C, a clear vision of our generosity. You know, ever since the start of the pandemic, uh, we have seen that we have received about 92% of our overall budget. And uh, listen, I want to just really encourage our church family because, listen, this is a season that has really hit people financially very hard, but you have continued to faithfully honor the Lord, give to the Lord, sacrifice to the Lord. And because of your faithful giving, listen, we have been able to do so much ministry even in the midst of a pandemic. And I got to tell you, as your pastor, it blesses my heart to see you be so faithful in your giving because it reveals to me and to all of us Listen, that our trust is not in things of this world, amen? Our trust is in our providing, providing God, amen? So thank you so much for being so faithful and giving generously to the work of Christ. Uh, because there was a little dip in, you know, in what we were able to receive, we adjusted our expenses just like every other family, right? We are a church family here. Like you adjust your expenses, we adjust our expenses because we are at the end of we're the people of God. We're a church family, so we adjusted our expenses but here's the stat that I, I, I'm just so, just so happy. We have seen 1,516 people give to the Lord for the very first time since this pandemic started. <laughs> Church, listen, to me, that is such a blessing for me to see that because it shows me that there's so many of you out there, 1,500, that when the hardest times come, you said, you know what, 
I'm going to take that step of trust, and I'm going to honor the Lord. I'm going to give to the Lord. I'm going to, I'm going to continue. I'm going to put you know, my treasure not on the temporal things on this world, but on the eternal things. Amen? And so listen, if you're one of those 1,500 people, church family, let's encourage them. That's a big step. And uh, it's amazing to see how faithful you have been. So thank you so much. And then lastly, I want to remind us, write this down, Senator D. I want to give us a clear vision of the current need of the gospel. You know, the truth of the matter is that it's easy for us as a church or even individual as families, as, as, as people, during a season like this pandemic, to really be inwardly focused. But I, I want to take the time to really just awaken our, rea- our minds to the reality that I cannot Im- think of any other time in reason, me- in re- in reason uh, history where there's such a need for the gospel, amen? Folks, with so much division, with so much discouragement, with so much anxiety, with so many marriages on the brink of disaster. Listen, you know what people need? The hope of the gospel. The message of the gospel. Listen, that God loves us, right? But our sin separates us from God, but God made a way to have a relationship with God, to be forgiven of our sins, and that is through His Son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, who lived that perfect life, so that those who simply put their trust in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you believe that, church family? And so church, listen, as we move forward, I know we all got issues in our lives, but don't forget your neighbors, your family members, your coworkers that you work, they need the gospel more than ever, right? Let's be outwardly focused and not inwardly focused. But now that we have a clear vision of where we're at right now, we also need a clear vision of where we're going. In fact, write this down as big number two. Church, we need a clear vision about our future direction. Now, let's go back to the book of Nehemiah because listen to what he tells all these leaders next. He tells them this. He said, you see the trouble that we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned. Come, let us, what's the next word? What's the next word? Yeah, yeah, come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem so that we may no longer suffer derision. So notice, after he gives clarity of the present situation, now he gives them a future, a future direction of where they were going. And for them, at that moment, is to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. See, just like a pilot... um, is able to regain their sense of direction the moment that they set eyes on the horizon. Listen, just like that, you know, the people of Jerusalem needed to set their eyes, right, on the horizon of where God was leading them. And church, Christ fellowship, people of God, listen carefully. The same thing with us. Because the way that we won't fall into church spatial disorientation is by raising up our eyes and setting our eyes on the future horizon of where God is leading us to. Yeah, because the clear vision of where we're going as a church, listen carefully, the better we will be. Amen? And so first, before we get there, let me just first remind us of why we exist, all right? In fact, write this down as letter A. Listen, our mission is to help you and your family follow Jesus. That's our mission. You know, it's so simple, yet it's so profound, isn't it? See, our mission, the reason that we exist, is to help you follow the Lord in every area of your life. Nothing more, but listen, nothing less. And so when a coworker asks you at work, hey, you know, what do y'all do here at Christ Fellowship? It's very simple. Well, the reason we exist is to help you and your family follow the Lord, follow Jesus, grow in your knowledge of the Lord. But you see, our commitment here, CF, is not only to the individual, 
But really our commitment is holistically for the whole family. That's why I said our mission is to help you and your family follow Jesus. So, so whatever your family looks like, every family is a little different. Listen, our goal is to help you together as a family to grow in the Lord. And folks, that is the reason that we have spent so many resources going into our next generation ministries. And so, for example, we have our CF Kids ministry, which they do a phenomenal job week in and week out. Yeah, teaching our little ones. Listen, they are not, right now, they are not in daycare. They are actually learning God's truth in the way they could understand. They are soft, like soft concrete. We're just impressing the message of the gospel in them. And we have thousands of faithful volunteers who teach our little ones the word of God. And so let's, get, let's encourage those volunteers as well. Thank you so much if you're serving in CF Kids. But not only that, listen, when they graduate from fifth grade from elementary and they go into middle school and high school, Listen, we have CF Students Ministry as well. Yeah, there we go. And church, they meet every Friday night, and hundreds of students come together to study God's Word, to have fellowship. And you know what? Those are the years are so critical because those are the years that they are trying to find their identity and who they are. And they're going to find their identity in somewhere, in some, in some, in someone or some, on, on something. But our goal is that during those hardest moments in their lives, that we set their eyes on the Lord. Amen. And so let's give it up for the for CF students. They meet every Friday night at each of our campuses. But, you know, recently we, have, we knew that there was a gap where a lot of high school students will graduate and will fall off in their walk with Christ. That's why we have began, begun our CF Young Adult Ministry from ages 18 to 29. Yeah. And it's amazing, every Tuesday night they gather together to study God's Word and, and, uh, and fellowship. And it's amazing to see how this ministry has flourished in the midst of a pandemic. It just shows you the need in the heart of our young adults to have a place where they can fellowship and grow in the knowledge of the God. So let's encourage our young adults once again. And so, for, church, listen, if the reason why we exist is to help people follow Jesus, right? Now we need to know where we're going. What's our vision? Well, write this down as letter B. Our vision is to establish Christ fellowship churches across Miami, the Caribbean, and Latin America. And and family, let me just remind us why we do what we do. You know, the what the model of our church that it's called the multi-site model, which is one church, many different locations. And the big misconception about this style of church is that it is a, a church growth model. Listen, church, it, this is not a church growth model. It's a community reaching model. You see, because the idea is not to expect people from Miami all right, to drive all the way down to our first campus, the Palmetto Bay campus, to listen to the Word of God. You know, imagine that you have a co-worker in North Miami, and they are discouraged, they are anxious, they are having trouble in their marriage with their kids, and they are looking for hope. Listen, we cannot expect them to drive 45, 50 minutes, an hour to come listen to the Word of God. And so the idea is that we start new campuses in different communities. We serve them. We love on them. We we start tilling the ground so that people don't have to drive more than 15 or 20 minutes to go to a church. Statistics show that people will not drive farther than 15 to 20 minutes to go listen, to go to church. And so the reason we are, the way we do church is that we want to establish a church, a small little beacon of light in all these communities so that everyone has a chance to hear the gospel. And folks, this is why about 10 years ago, we began to establish campuses all throughout Miami, and we went from one church of several hundred to a church of many locations with thousands and thousands of people. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And church, listen, by the good grace of our God, by the good grace of our good Lord, Listen, the Lord has blessed us with six different campuses here in Miami. We got all the way down from the Relin Homeson campus. We got our West Kendall campus, our Palmetto Bay campus, 
right? We have our Doral campus. We have our Coral Gables campus. And we have our downtown campus, which is being currently renovated. You'll hear about that a little bit later. It's currently being renovated and will likely open later on this year. And church, listen, God has not only blessed us, okay, with local campus, but he's blessed us with 12 different global campuses. Yeah, we can give it up for the Lord for that. We have campuses in Cuba, in Colombia. We have campuses in Guatemala, in Costa Rica. And church, here's what I want you to think about. God is doing such tremendous work in these global campuses that right now, they are 127%, the, the, uh, the attendance has grown 127% since the beginning of COVID. And so listen, God is at work in all of these countries that, that, that God has opened the doors for us. And so church, here is what I want to stop for just a moment. And as a church family, here's what I want to do. I want us to treasure what the Lord has done among us. Family, we have 18 different locations of our church. 18 different ones. And so my desire is that when you think of Christ's fellowship, you are in awe of what the good Lord has done in our midst. Amen? To think of 18 different expressions of our church family all throughout Miami, all throughout America. Listen, only one could do that, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, church? And, you know, I have personally seen the effectiveness when we start a brand new campus. Many of you know that I was actually the campus pastor at the Miami Springs location when it first started. And I remember that on this stage right here, I was standing, and there were about 15 people that were ready to go to a new community and to start a brand new campus. I remember the whole church prayed for us. It was an amazing night. But you know what happened? That small group of people went out to the little city of Miami Spring, and we began to till the ground. We began to serve the Lord, serve people, love people, share the gospel, invite people. And throughout the years, the church has blessed that campus tremendously that today they have been able to find a permanent location, which is a Doral location, and thousands of people right now, yeah, they go and they go are able to worship God. And folks, the reason I say that is because God saw the faithfulness of the small group of people that went out. He saw that our love for the Lord, our faithfulness, our hard work, and he blessed it. And look what it is now. What started off so small eight years ago now is a flourishing campus. Same thing with the West Kendall campus and every other campus that we have. And so, listen, in the future, just know this, in the future... There's going to be moments where I ask our congregation, a small group of faithful people, to go to a new community so that more people could reach, be reached for Christ. All right? So be ready at some point in the future when God opens the door, we're going to run through them. Amen, church family? And so, and so here's, here's the thing. You may be wondering, right, Omar, we, we get it. We get it. it it's, the key is starting new churches in, in brand new communities. We get it. But, but Omar... Where are we heading as a church? You know, you know what, what is our horizon? What's our horizon for a year from now? What's our horizon three years from now, five years from now? You all want to know? No, no, you all want to know? Yeah. All right, take a look. During the upcoming year, there will be three primary focuses for Christ Fellowship. Our first focus during the year 2022 will be to successfully relaunch our downtown campus. After more than two years of renovation and restoration, this will be a state-of-the-art facility. This campus will not only honor the past by restoring the building to its original beauty and splendor, but at the same time look towards the future to meet the needs of today and tomorrow. Located in the heart of downtown, just one block away from the new Miami World Center, it promises to be a building that will be used to reach people for Christ for generations to come. Our second focus during the first year is to begin renovating and modernizing all of our CF Kids facilities. For over 104 years, we have been a church that has focused on helping our children grow in the knowledge and the love of God. And the way we have done that has been by creating engaging, interactive, and fun environments where they can not only learn God's Word at their age level, 
but also learn how to live it out in their daily lives. The last time our kids' ministry was updated was 15 years ago, and we have seen thousands of children impacted throughout the years. It is time to renovate and modernize all of our children's facilities for the future generation. For this upcoming year, we will begin a multi-year process where all of our Christ Fellowship campuses will be updated so that every child can learn about the gospel in the best possible environment. And the third focus during the first year is to take our Level Up program to the next level. Christ Fellowship has developed its own leadership development program where every staff and church member can take their leadership potential to the next level. We know that the effectiveness of any church can be traced back to the ability of the leadership of the church. So if we're going to push back the gates of hell Miami by establishing churches in new communities, we need to prepare the leaders of tomorrow today. And here is why it is critical that we spend a lot of time developing the leaders of tomorrow. It's because within the next three years, we would like to see an expansion of three new campuses. We believe that what our communities need more than anything else are Christ-centered churches where the glorious gospel is proclaimed every week. And the way that we're going to reach Miami is not by making people drive far to learn about Jesus, but rather bringing the gospel to them. As these new campuses are launched, they are able to focus on their own specific community by serving them, meeting their needs, and bringing them the message of hope. We would love to see a local campus be established in Miami that can bring the gospel to new communities. Communities like Miami Lakes, Tamiami, or Miami Shores. One of the things that we were able to do during this COVID season was expand our Spanish services from one service to five services at our West Kendall, Doral, Homestead, Redland, and Palmetto Bay campuses. These services offer a full worship set, announcements, and preaching all in Spanish. In addition, we have established an online presence with a full-out Spanish website and social media platforms. We currently have full Spanish services at our campuses. And having these Spanish services positions us to be able to start a full-out Spanish campus. Many may not know this, but Miami-Dade County has a city with the highest percentage of Hispanic population in the entire nation, making up 95% of that population. And that city is Hialeah. We would love to see our first full-out Spanish campus in a city like Hialeah within the next three years. Globally, we are positioning ourselves to launch a new campus in a new country. And we are praying about Puerto Rico, Mexico, or wherever God opens up a country to us. Digitally, we are also looking to elevate our online engagement. COVID has shifted our society's dependence towards digital and online resources. And we want to be a church that provides studio quality midweek resources that can engage and equip our families to pursue Christ like never before. And within the next five years, not only would we like to see more campuses being established, but we also want to minister to those hurting in our city like never before. One of the primary ways we serve those in our city who are hurting and under-resourced is through Caring for Miami. One of the endeavors of Caring for Miami is Project Smile, which is a mobile dental bus that provides free dental services to low-income families and cancer patients. Our current bus was bought in 2013, and throughout the years, we have served 6,149 people, providing 18,280 different services with a value of over $2.2 million. It has been amazing to see what God has done in just eight years. Unfortunately, our current bus is beginning to break down and hinder our ability to provide these valuable services. Therefore, we are looking to upgrade our dental bus to a new, bigger bus that can travel to more communities in Miami and provide a higher number of free dental services. With every patient, we are not only able to meet their immediate physical need, but also their spiritual need by showing them the love of Christ. You may be wondering, what will we do with our current existing bus? Well, our dream is to convert our current dental bus to a mobile market bus with fresh produce and groceries where under-resourced people can obtain free and fresh food. Our mobile market would go to these areas of most need and allow folks to shop free of charge so that their immediate needs are met and their dignity remains intact. 
And lastly, we also have a heart for the families in this city. Christ Fellowship Academy has been a ministry of the church for nearly 50 years, and many families have been led to follow the Lord through the leadership of our teachers and our staff. I don't have to tell you that the secular educational philosophy in this country is shifting further from the morals and the values that God reveals to us in His Word. In the coming years, we anticipate more families in our city looking for a safe and Christian education. We're looking to expand our Christ Fellowship Academy to other campuses across Miami where we can offer a quality education in a Christ-centered environment. Christ Fellowship, the Lord has given us a bold vision and the resources to accomplish that. So let's come together as a people of God to reach Miami for Christ. Hey, come on, how many of you are excited? Yeah, man, what a, what a great vision our God has given our church, right? That He's made it possible for so many amazing things to take place. And I gotta tell you, listen, the reason I am so confident that, listen, our God could accomplish this is not only because He's the sovereign God that really controls all things, but listen, I believe we have the right people here to accomplish that big task that the Lord has given to us. First of all, listen, we have our amazing staff, about 100 people. Can we encourage our staff that serve throughout all of our campuses? And folks, they are led by the directional leadership team. In fact, I want to invite them to come up here right now. And they are the team. Yeah, we can get up. And they are the team that, that leads our, 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 our whole entire staff. Pastor Echo, come on up. And so I just want to quickly uh, if, if, um, introduce them to you so you have a, a good visual. We got here uh, 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 Gideon Ape, and who uh, oversees all of our ex worship experiences here at Christ Fellowship. Can we give it up for, for Pastor Gideon? He's been amazing so far. Uh, this is Pastor Ray Perez. He's stepping into a role of direct, uh, pastor over campuses, all local and global. And so he oversees all of them. So he is stepping into this new right now. Let's give it up for him as well. We have Debbie Sutton, a longtime faithful servant here. Yeah, she oversees our operations and our uh, finances. Uh, we have Samantha Stockton who could not be here. She's going through COVID protocols. I think we have a picture right behind her. Yeah, but she oversees all of our ministries. She's also phenomenal, our, all of our next-gen ministries. And last but not least, we have Pastor Carlos Carlos. Come on over here, Pastor Carlos. Guys, give it up for Pastor Carlos. And he's not only the, one of our teaching pastors, which he always does a phenomenal job with that, but he's now stepping into the role of executive pastor. Now, yeah, we can get up for him. And just so you know what an executive pastor is, many people may not know. You know, my role as a lead pastor is really the vision and the direction of our church and the preaching and the teaching, right? That's, that's kind of my responsibility as the lead pastor. But the role of an executive pastor is really to oversee the entire operation or the organizational side of our church. And so not only is Pastor Carlos going to be a teaching pastor like he always has, but now he's going to be the role of executive pastor, which leads the DLT and the staff, but he also oversees everything that deals with the organizational part of our church. And so uh, Pastor Carlos, we love you, man. We are excited for you. you so much. And we cannot wait to see what you're going to do. It's going to be awesome. And then, so we have the right staff, but come on over here. We have Pastor Al Williams here. And uh, yeah, we can give it up for him. Man, you are loved. And so our teaching team, you know, most churches just have one pastor who just teaches almost every single week of the year. And people get bored of that, right? Nobody wants to hear the same guy over and over and over. But we have been blessed. We are a teaching team. And so between Pastor Carlos, Pastor Al, and myself, we are the teaching team of Christ Fellowship. And so, man, you did a great job, pa uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Al. Thank you so much for being here. So we have an amazing staff here, but we also have an amazing board. And in fact, I'm going to call the board of trustees to come up here. Give it up for them as they come up here, yeah. And the board is actually, the board is actually 
uh, just lay people from our church who have stepped up to really represent you. And uh, they help us process all major decisions. And we're a team together. And they do such a faithful, faithful job. Uh, some of them could not be here. Uh, like Alex Ledon, he's going through COVID protocols too. And Ari Hathaway, she's also very faithful. But she, has not been, she was not able to join us today. Uh, but I mean, we have an amazing board. They do such a great, great job. And uh, Howard, Howard Green on, on the end. Guys, give it up for Howard. Come on, Howard. He has been the board chair for many years, and he's transitioning out. He's still part of the board uh, and the personal team, uh, but he's transitioning out just to be part of both boards. And so thank you so much for serving for so many years. Man, we love you so much. You got it. And stepping into the board chair is Mike Para. Mike, give it up for Mike. Thank you so much for, for helping lead. He is serves here and guest services here in Palmetto Bay, super faithful, and so he'll be leading the board in this next season. So let's encourage Mike, yeah, he's awesome, and the rest of the board. And so, Ben, I believe that we have the right staff, we have the right board, but you know what? I believe we have the right people of God, amen? And the right people is you. And, and, and church, here's what I want to say. Listen, going back to the, to the passage, you know, after the people of God, which is you, after they heard the vision that God had given them at that juncture, listen to what they said in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 18. It says this, and they said, let us rise up. Everyone say rise up. Oh, uh, no, everyone say rise up. Yeah, they said, let us rise up and build. Everyone say build. Everyone say build. Yeah, let us rise up and build. And then I love this. So they strengthened their hands for the good work. And church, that's what I want to challenge all of us. Listen, we have such an amazing church family. What I want to challenge us for the future, listen, is that all of us together, all 17,000 of us, that we would rise up, that we would build, and that we would strengthen our hands for the good work of the ministry, amen? And you know what, listen, we, we, can, we can work hard in the next several years. We can strengthen, but let me tell you something. Unless God blesses, unless God shows us grace, nothing will be accomplished, amen? Listen, we will do the faithful hard work that he's asked us, but we will depend on God's grace leading us and blessing our efforts. Amen, church family? And so before we end up and we sing together, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you to stand up at all campuses. If you're at home, you can stand up as well. And if you're with your husband, with your wife, hold their hand. And I want to pray today for this. I want to pray that God would bless our efforts, that God would show good grace to us so that the people of the city could hear the glorious gospel. Amen? So I'm going to I'll pray with me, and then we're going to sing. Father, we gather together like those people in Jerusalem, they gather together, they strengthen their hand for the work of the ministry. Father, your people, Christ Fellowship, this little church family is gathering together right now. And we're asking you, oh Lord, we're committing right now as a church family to rise up and build, to take, to do what you're calling us to do. But Father, we are asking you for your blessing. We're asking you to bestow upon us your grace, your unmerited favor that we don't deserve, oh God. Father, we pray that as we move forward, that as we set our eyes on the horizon, Father, that you would bestow grace, favor, oh God, so that we can accomplish, your people could accomplish the work that you're giving us to do. So that at the end of those five years, oh Lord, you and you alone would be glorified. So Father, thank you, Lord, for this great vision. Thank you, Lord, for our staff, for our board, for our church family. Let's all gather together, oh Lord. Help us, oh Lord, and strengthen our hands for the work of the ministry. It's in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ that I pray and all of God's people say, amen. All right, church family, let's go ahead and stay standing and let's go ahead and sing together.
my life. Not only do I get to come here and learn more about Christ and strengthen my relationship with Him, but I can also confidently say that I found a family here. I've met so many extraordinary people here in CF, one of those people being my small group leader. She has been there throughout the roughest patches in my life, and she has held my hand through every tribulation. God has blessed my life through CF because of my salvation, and now I have a forever family. It's really amazing. Um, like Even if we can't go to church in person, they still do CF Kids Online, and the games and extra things is really fun. And um, I just really love being able to help out and do what I can and still learn about God, and I love dancing to the worship songs. God has blessed my family and I for CF by calling all four of us to serve every Sunday, which allows us to experience the true meaning of a church family. So CF has blessed my family, has blessed my life in so many ways, and I just, um, I pray that as we continue to serve Him, that God will continue to have His hand over our lives. We serve a perfect God who restores, who redeems, who blesses, who encourages, and who does the work through us if we allow Him to do so. So, been blessed so much by this church. I remember one day sitting on my couch that I reached out to CF that I came across on Instagram. Somebody reached me back and they said, there is a Jesus, he loves you. He wants the best for you. He will never leave you. Can I pray for you? And I was shocked. I was so happy. Nobody's ever asked me that. CF has really changed my life in every way. And I'm so thankful. I really am so thankful. God has blessed me so much um, with bringing CF into my life. And your family, and your children, and their children, and their children, may His favor be upon you in a thousand generations. And your family, and your children, and their children, and their children, may His favor be upon you. Children and their children, may His presence go before.
What an incredible message. Thank you, Pastor Omar, for that message on where we are as a church and where we're going. Also, family, we have a service near you. Join us at any of our five campuses or online to worship God and to learn more about His Word. We also have services available in English and Spanish and a fantastic kids ministry ready to welcome your little one in a safe, secure, and fun environment. Here online, we also have services on Sunday at 9, 1045, and 1230, and you can always catch the message on demand as well as our platforms along with CF Kids and CF Students. For more information on other locations and times, please visit cfmiami.org slash times. All right, guys, now get excited. Next week, we start our brand new series, Chasing Wind, and we will discover real wisdom from King Solomon. Invite a friend or family member to join you. Now have yourself an incredible week, CF family, and don't forget to be back next week here at CF Online.